Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne Hackman Cardi. In today's episode, I speak with Simon Penny. Simon is the founder of Waste Aid, but he's also doing some really cool stuff right now in the area of debris and waste management. So stay tuned as I talk to Simon about what he's doing and what you can do to help lessen the impact of waste in your community. Hi, Simon. How are you today? I'm very well. Thank you, Leanne. So tell me, before we get started, just a little bit about your background. Um, well, I have been in waste management for many years now. Uh, I uh, grew up, so to speak, uh, professionally within, within the industry. Um, I am originally an islander uh, from the Channel Island of Guernsey. Uh, I worked on the island directly after uh, completing my first degree at Aberdeen University, which I did in geography. I ended up back on the island working in the environment and health department, uh, which is a department of the local municipality. Um, and very quickly, I was seduced into the world of waste. Um, and, and to be honest, you have to be seduced into it. It, it it's quite uh, it it <clears throat> it has its characters. It has its um, uh, furballs. It has its quirks, um, and um, but it also has a great attraction and, and variety. Um, so I worked in Guernsey, uh, which is a small island between England and France. It's about. Uh, it's about 80 kilometers off the coast of southern England and about 50 kilometers off the northern coast of France. Um, very small island. You have to sort of double zoom on Google Earth to see that there's land there. Um, but there's about 50,000 people who, who cling to that rock. Um, and uh, it's a great place, a great place to, to live and, and, and grow up. And... Um, uh, yes, I, I worked there for five years as the first waste regulation officer on the island. Um, so that was cool because you've got to do quite a variety of different tasks. So I was involved with dealing with municipal solid waste, just that's just general household waste management. Um, I was involved with dealing with hazardous waste. We had old munitions, in fact, from the uh, Second World War. The island was actually occupied uh, by the Nazi forces in the Second World War, and they'd left landmines and uh, other hazardous um, materials back. So we were involved in a wide range of uh, waste management challenges and issues. After that, I uh, met my wife-to-be and moved to the mainland. I worked in at Edinburgh City Council um, for some time as a, as a policy officer. Um, and it was at that point that actually I had my first opportunity to uh, work overseas. <clears throat> Um, whilst I was still at Edinburgh City Council, the tsunami of uh, 2004 happened uh, mm. in Southeast Asia, uh, you will probably recall. Yep. And um, I had the opportunity to go and help with debris management and waste management in the, in the immediate aftermath of that in, on the island of Sri Lanka. Um, and we can go into that a little bit, bit more depth in a minute. But um, I set up my own consulting company at about that time and uh, have been involved in some elements of international development and, and disaster waste management ever since. Wow, that's the, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Um, one of the things, I, I know you founded Waste Aid, and so tell me a little bit about that organization. Well, um, I can't speak to it at the moment in, in the sense that I'm not directly involved with it uh, any okay. any further. But yes, I, I did found it and uh, it's doing incredibly well, doing great work. Um, it's uh, just uh, expanding beyond what I could ever have dreamt it to expand to. And, um, you know, I'm sure that they would uh, love to be uh, at the um, the focus of, an, of another um, uh, a seminar that you, you would put on. Um, but, um, you know, I, I have nothing but admiration for them and they're doing some very, very, very important work. Well, so let's talk about islands then. So, so I mean, it, it is a very unique 
situation when you're on an island. You know, you think when you're on the mainland, debris management, I mean, you can, you could, you've got access to trucks and, and a transportation network that unlike what you would have uh, on an island. I mean, you can only go so far and then you're in the ocean. Um, so I'm just curious as to uh, the kinds of issues that you do find in an island environment uh, when it comes to debris management. Well, islands are both similar and different. Um, there's some 15 to 17,000 islands worldwide um, with, um, you know, with, with a huge variety of issues and challenges that face them. Um, waste being being one of the key ones and possibly one of the ones that is most overlooked at times um every island has its own idiosyncrasies has its own unique characteristics but there's also great great similarities between islands as well they often uh, have to deal with waste that comes ashore uh from the marine environment they have to import a great deal of the material that they use which often comes with a lot of packaging um they uh, are many many miles often away from recycling markets so even if they are able to collect material for recycling it, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of uh gas to get the materials back to those recycling markets um it's difficult to develop recycling markets on island um, because uh, obviously the markets are generally quite small. Um, but that's but again, you know, in, on an island like Sri Lanka or or Indonesia, it's it's quite quite different to an island like uh, the Seychelles um, uh, or or the Falkland Islands, um, which only have very small populations. So um, sometimes they can be very uh, isolated and hostile environments generally. Um, which again adds further challenges to dealing with 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 waste with waste. Um, on top of that, infrastructure, the actual infrastructure, the the the, the uh, mechanisms used to dispose of waste or to or to manage the waste that is produced can be can be quite unique. Uh, they often have to be much smaller scale uh, than you would find on the mainland or in a city or urban environment. Um, and um, landfills, uh, et cetera, things like that um, are extremely expensive if they're done properly. Um, so again, this is a, a, again a, a challenge to, to, to many islands around the world. Yeah, I mean, when you think about uh, Sri Lanka, when you think about Indonesia, the, 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 it was Banda Aceh, right? I mean, that, that uh, Tsunami, you think about, I was in uh, British Virgin Islands and, and it was after the hurricanes there, Irma Maria, and all these yachts were just offshore and underwater. I mean, you know, the, the mast is sticking out, but they said probably those owners, they, they'll get their insurance and they won't ever come and get that boat out. And you just think the magnitude of waste that happens after a natural disaster, it's, it's, it can be overwhelming. <laughs> these islands it's like where do you even start yes uh, and i i think also it's worth taking a step back at this point and considering waste itself as a disaster um you know um you know it, it, it it's not only is waste produced by disasters around the world but i i, I think that waste itself is a disaster um you know, some, uh, and this was some of the thinking behind setting up waste aid. Um, some, some, uh, uh, three billion people, that's billion, not million, billion people around the world did not have access to uh, waste collection um, infrastructure. Um, Sixty million people live on or adjacent to mega dumps around the world. Um, there are, you know, there are implicit disasters within waste, as well as waste being a symptom of and a product of natural and man-made disasters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't stay in this line of work if you didn't feel like you're making an impact. Um, so you must feel like there are some solutions out there and you're working towards some of those things. What, what would you... What what would you say to people watching this as, as to some things that we can all start doing or or changing how we do things well um i think 
most importantly, it is to have some hope. Um, it can be very overwhelming when you hear the stats and the figures and you see the plastic in the ocean. You see the plastic raining, literally raining down on Mount Everest. <clears throat> Um, you see uh, turtles and seals and whales and birds full of plastic. Um, you see the, the devastation that waste brings to many populations around the world. And I think the first, the first issue is that you have to have some hope that this can change. Um, you know, it, it's easy to become overwhelmed by it. Secondly, in terms of practical action, um, Obviously, supporting organizations that are working to, to address these challenges. Uh, the UN has a, a number of sustainable development goals that it has set up, and waste and acting on waste addresses quite a number of them. Um, it also has the opportunity to, if we do it in the right way, address things like climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. And I would say that whilst individual behavior is important you know uh, we we have to do what we can as individuals we need to put pressure systemic systemic pressure on our societies and on the structures within our societies to do things differently to 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 look at things like um circular economy and to perhaps even consider other ways of 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 managing materials within an economic context so is there anyone that you could cite, and maybe this is a hard question, but that is doing it well, that, that we could look to and say, you know, they're doing that community, that country, they're really on top of this issue? Well, I have a little bit of a, a I must declare a little bit of a, a bias in this, um, uh, uh, in, in this statement, but I'm, a, as I said, I'm originally from the island of Guernsey. And Guernsey has recently gone through a development of a waste strategy, which was uh, essentially to burn it. Uh, it was going to build an incinerator, uh, but through public pressure and a great deal of um, work that the local authority there did, they diverted from using waste incineration technology, which I must confess, it does have a place in certain situations, just not in that particular one, um, <clears throat> to uh, to now having a recycling rate of, I think, 73% on the island of Guernsey, an actual reduction in waste generation uh, of, of uh, a significant amount. Um, so they've actually reduced the waste that is being produced. And ultimately, that is... The, the way forward. We, we're going to have to reduce the amount of material that we produce as and generate as waste. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up, is there anything else that perhaps I didn't ask about that you wanted to mention? Well, uh, like I said, um, yes, I, I, I am, um, first of all, thankful for your time and for giving me the opportunity to be interviewed on your show. Um, I am working on a new initiative uh, called the Island Waste Management Global Alliance. Uh, our website is iwmga.org. Um, so if you want to find out more about that, yeah. please please come to that website and feel free to contact uh, me. Um, I, I, I have... Uh, I will talk about waste until kingdom come. So um, if you really want to talk about it, then please do get in touch. And I really appreciate once again, the time, uh, your time this morning. That's great. Well, I will uh, put the video or the um, URL for your website in this video description so people can find out more. Just curious as far as what, what is your hope with that organization? Uh, what, what's the mission, the mandate? So the mission is to create a, a worldwide alliance of islands. Uh, that specifically focus on helping islands meet the challenge of waste management and circular economy. There are a uh, uh, great number, uh, or there are a number of great networks out there uh, that do connect islands, um, but none of them actually focus specifically on connecting the waste industry with island communities. So I'm looking forward to um, helping helping that. Uh, marriage take place and um 
we actually had our first seminar a, a couple of weeks ago online. We had over 100 delegates sign up um, from across the world. And uh, it's great that, uh, as I mentioned before the interview, I'm also an island ambassador with Island Innovation. And they um, have been supportive and helpful in that as well. That's great. Well, do keep in touch because I, I would like to, as you go forward, uh, maybe have someone or, or hear more about how things are going with your network, because I think that is important that people can share best practices and ideas and solutions, and then we can get further faster. So yeah, um, thank you very much for your time, Simon. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.